the best point and click games ever made was King's Quest VI. Although the idea of King's Quest VI wasn't very original, the execution of the game was done perfectly. By taking cues from mainly King's Quest V and previous installments in the series, they created one of the best King's Quest games ever made. The game had amazing graphics for its time and even included good voice acting later on, especially considering the last King's Quest. Graham, watch out! A poison a snake! Anyway, these are just a few of the things that make the game fantastic. Also, King's Quest VI came out in two versions. One was for Windows and the other was for DOS. The main difference between the two is that the Windows has speech, high resolution character portraits, and it was on a CD. King's Quest VI throws the player in the shoes of Prince Alexander. He begins shipwrecked on an unknown beach that you soon find out is called the Land of the Green Isles, which was actually your destination to begin with. You quickly find your way to the castle and attempt to reunite yourself with the Princess Cosima, but to only be thrown out of the castle until she wants nothing to do with you, thus creating the main objective of the game. But of course, the game evolves into much more than just that. During your quest, you'll visit many unique places, along with some of the strangest characters you've ever seen, such as a talking black widow and chess pieces. And all the work that was put into this game was definitely worth it. Being able to interact with almost anything in the game is awesome. The horn has plenty of nothing to say. Sometimes, I would just try and talk to all the inanimate objects in the game, just to see what the narrator would say to me. My personal favorite part of the game would have to be the death though. Dying in games today is usually boring and avoided at all costs, but in King's Quest, dying was fun. Every death in this game has its own small scene and is followed by some kind of remark by the narrator, and there are so many ways to die. I can't even count all the times I save my game just to see the losing scene of jumping in the water or stepping on the wrong time. Come on, jump in! A little water won't hurt you! Considering the poor condition of the shore, it looks like the easiest way to get into the water is just to jump off the pier. This is definitely a good thing though, because you'll be dying in this game a lot. And if death doesn't stop you, then the puzzles in this game will. And trust me, there's enough to keep you busy for a while. And after beating this game, some players would find out that they could have beaten it a completely different way. One path is a little easier than the other, but the harder one is much more rewarding. Although, this game inevitably has some flaws in it. The only one that I can think of, and is a pretty big flaw, is that if you miss a key item in a certain point of the game, you can't always go back and get it. So if you save your game after that, it's impossible to progress. So you have to actually restart your guy if you don't have a save point before then. Aside from that, I would definitely recommend this game, especially to someone who likes a good adventure game. That's all I have to say for now though, until next time. Rat-a-tat-tat. -tat.